Math 030. This is a lesson on vertical translations. You will recall that the previous exercise lesson was on horizontal. So now we factor this in. And I'm um, going to start off with a few graphs. So start off with f of x is equal to x squared, your garden variety quadratic function. No translations, no transformations at all, just your basic Gra untransformed graph looking like that. Now I'm going to take a look at another one. So if you want to sketch f of x is equal to x squared plus 3, this is a quadratic function the same as we just saw, however there's a plus 3 and we want to find out what effect that has on the graph. Now you have seen this in 20 pure, this is a, a quadratic function um, review basically. On your calculator, you could enter that as y1 is equal to x squared plus 3. And you'll get a graph like that. And you'll notice that relative to the previous graph, it is the same shape, no changes whatsoever. However, the whole thing has been moved 3 units up. So the effect of adding 3 onto the original function moved it 3 up. So a vertical translation of 3 units up. Then, if you were to consider f of x is equal to the square root of x, this is your square root function, looking like that. Notice that's half of a parabola opening to the right. Now, I want to take that graph, and I'm going to subtract 2 from it. So f of x is equal to square root x minus 2. So I am using function notation, by the way. But remember, f of x is the same thing as just using y. And I'll be going back and forth with these frequently. So on your calculator, if you're going to enter that, make sure you do it by closing the bracket around the x. Very important. So square root symbol, and then the bracket will open with the x there. Close the bracket, subtract 2. And if you do that, you'll get that graph, which is the same as the previous, but notice how we're starting at minus 2 instead. So it's been translated down 2 units. So vertical translation, two units down. And that was brought about by the subtraction of two. Now what you're probably noticing already is that it appears that the vertical and horizontal translations have different rules. The previous lesson on horizontal had the sign always opposite. With vertical, it's consistent. So if that's subtract two, then we go two down. Now it's not quite as simple as that. By appearance, it appears to be true. But um, you have to be careful. And let's take a look at a, an absolute value graph. So this gets entered in on your calculator is y1 is equal to abs, which is absolute value, open bracket, x, close bracket. And if you can't find the abs, one thing you can do, and I'm just going to tell you this, is go to the catalog feature, which is second zero, and everything is listed there, and abs is right close to the top. However, the other way to do it is to press second function math. Oops, forget the second function, just press math. Excuse me for that. And then move the arrow over to numbers. And then number one absolute value is there. So forget about that second function, and I'll clean that up afterwards and then the bracket opens and then put the x there. And you may not need it for a graph like this anyways because it's just going to look like that. Now the next graph is going to take that and translate it, but you see that the 3 is with the y this time. And there's two ways to tackle these, and this is very important. People make mistakes with it all the time. Now the one method is to isolate the y, which is how you would enter it into your calculator, and that's the traditional way to view these. And you'll notice that positive 3, when taken to the other side, which is negative 3. So on your calculator, you would enter it like that. Absolute value of x, close bracket, make sure, take away 3. And then that gives you that graph, which is the same as the previous, however, moved three units down. So you see that it's not quite as um, 
regular as you might have thought. When you have the y isolated, the rules are in fact backwards for the vertical translations relative to horizontal. But in the original stage, when you had y plus 3, you notice the sign was backwards there too. So it all depends on where you have the number, whether you've isolated the y or not. Yeah, okay, vertical 3 down for that. But here's the statement that sums it up. In general, given y is equal to f at x, y equal f at x plus k, or y minus k equal f at x indicates a vertical translation of exactly k units. So if you have the y isolated, then the k is honest. If it's a positive number, it goes up. But if you don't have the y isolated, you write it in the form y minus k, then you have to remember that it is as backwards as is the horizontal translation. And in fact, at the substitution level, it's precisely the same as it is with horizontal. y has been replaced with y minus k. So let's take a look at a few examples where we identify these, and you'll be doing this same thing over and over again. But I want to emphasize that the horizontal and vertical translations really follow the same rules. You replace the original variable x or y with x minus h or y minus k, whichever variable you want to use. That's the standard ones. And the effect of that is the translation will be opposite to the sign. So let's say it's easier to see than it is to explain. So let's identify the translations of the following. So y is equal to 1 over x plus 1 relative to y is equal to 1 over x. This is a reciprocal function. I'm not going to graph it. We've seen quite a few of these. But what I'm concerned about is that plus 1. And that plus 1 indicates a vertical translation of 1 unit up. Because the y was isolated, the positive 1 is telling the truth, if you like. Number 2, f at x minus 2 is equal to 4 to the x, relative to f at x equal 4 to the x. This or these are exponential functions. A base and then the exponent has the variable x in it. And you notice that we do not have the y isolated. So your choice is to do this, bring that 2 over to the other side, so you get f at x is equal to 4 to the x plus 2, and then you can identify that it is 2 units upwards. So a vertical translation of 2 units up. So because the y is isolated, the vertical translation is telling the truth. However, you could have recognized that at the beginning, and as you do more and more of these, you will see that. Um, f at x or y minus 2 um, tells us that it's two units in the opposite direction. Number three, this will be the last one, y plus 1 is equal to the square root of x minus 3 relative to y is equal to the square root of x. So this one has got both horizontal and vertical translations. And I'm going to first off take a look at this um, y plus 1. Now, I'm not even going to bother isolating the y. I see y plus 1, and I know right away that that is a translation of one unit in the opposite direction. So instead of being up, it's going to be going down, because we have replaced y with y plus 1, and it's always opposite. Now, had you taken that 1 to the other side, then you'd, it would look different. And that's always the nature with vertical translations, because traditionally, people isolate the y variable and that will always change the appearance of the rules. And then for the x minus 3, this tells me it's a horizontal translation, translation of 3 units right. And that's the way it's always been. The sign is opposite. So x has been replaced with x minus 3. So the rules are really the same at the substitution level. So that's the end of this lesson. Um, there will be homework assigned, and then the next lesson will be on sort of playing around with these. So thank you for